Well, it's time for another exciting episode of Kitchen Table Electronics Repair with UXW Bill. Tonight we've got this nice little Micronta alarm clock, which is really nothing to write home about. It's just a cheap little clock. I don't know if they give us a... This is catalog number 63-753. This is the 12-hour version, although there was a 24-hour version available as well. Anyway, I loaned this to the key keeper because he wanted it. And unfortunately, as much as I as much as I like the keykeeper, he is my brother after all. He's a little hard on stuff. Now, some of this little clock's problems are the result of aged and brittle glue that let this front plate come off. But I also think, given that there's a crack down here at the lower front of the casing, that it probably had a few trips onto the floor when the keykeeper had it. He assured me he'd take care of it. So much for that, huh? But the other problem, there's a screw that holds this thing together, and it's just your typical plastic stem with threads in it that mounts to the top of the cabinet inside there. I should have a little light on the situation here. Anyway, after so many years and maybe a few of the key keepers trips to the floor, that little stem broke off. Now the vast majority of these problems really only require one fix, and that's to simply get a hold of some super glue put the display window back on, unscrew this post, and then mount it back where it belongs in there after coating it with some super glue, and then carefully pressing this crack together down here at the bottom, carefully pressing it back together when it's been glued. And then this little clock ought to be good as new. And this, this is kind of a nifty little clock because although its little display is actually kind of a bright fluorescent bluish green color, it's got this filter over the front of it that makes it blue. And it's also got a neat little photo cell that automatically varies the brightness of the display. So if you have it in a really dark place, it's really dim. If you have it sitting in the sun or something, it gets really bright. Anyway, the first thing probably to do is to fix this cabinet problem, fix this nasty little crack in the cabinet. And so all I've got to do with that is just get my super glue in there and go for it. Now, to get this thing back on, one of the things that we need to do is we need to clean all the old adhesive off of there so it doesn't interfere with the super glue's ability to set up. A good time to do that is when Bizarre Furhead is in the shower like he is right now. Because that's educational. He gets to learn just a little bit more about how household plumbing works. So basically all I have to do here to get started with removing this adhesive is to simply Scrub this thing gently. Use some dish soap to try and take it off of there. Maybe use some hand soap, whichever one seems to work better. And it'll take a little bit of scrubbing and it'll take a little bit of patience, but this little panel ought to be cleaned up. It ought to clean up just fine. Now we do want to be careful with the front side here because the last thing in the world we'd want to do is rub the printing off of it. Now there's been more progress made here than the camera would suggest. For one thing, it's a lot less yellow than it was. But since this stuff is still a little bit stubborn, I'm going to go ahead and carefully apply some Goo Gone here. Now you can try this too, but keep in mind that Goo Gone may work on certain plastics. I've had good results with it on most everything I ever tried, but try it in an area where if it goes wrong, nobody's really going to notice. Or try to find something that's made of the same plastic and test on that first. And there, after a couple of minutes of sitting bathed in Goo Gone, is the panel. And although the glue has left some discoloration in the fab in fabric, although it's left some discoloration in the plastic, that's better, it's much better than it was and there's no real trace of the glue left behind. I just used this piece of black rag here that I found in the rag bag, which is apparently sorely lacking. You hear that bizarre fur head? I need you to tear up a few more of your clothes so we can have some stuff in the rag bag. <laughs> tear up yours. Mine's the good stuff. <laughs> anyway, now I've got this thing cleaned off, and basically to help it take the glue, I'm going to clean it off even further with some uh, rubbing alcohol here. And if you can get, uh, the closer you can get to 100%, the better. I've seen 91 is pretty easy to find, and I've seen 99 for sale at your friendly neighborhood Meyer store. So if you need it, that's where you can go to get it. And the closer it is to being 100% pure, the quicker it'll evaporate. So now I'm just going to clean that off to get rid of any skin oils or fingerprints or anything like that that might be on it. 
Now I've got to get the glue residue off the clock, but unlike the front panel, which I can easily soak in Goo Gone, this is going to require some careful work to get that all cleaned up. I think the best approach to use here, although what you have will cause some variation in what you have to do, I think the best approach here is to use the Goo Gone directly on this rag and then carefully rub away this adhesive until it's gone and then do some little do some spot cleaning with the alcohol. Now it's time to take the super glue and carefully spread it along this surface and now that I've got it all cleaned up and it is a lot better than it looks on camera I'm going to, I'm going to try to keep it within the black spots so that it won't show up with super glue globs in the display or over the photo cell or anything like that but I will have to use some care when I put it back into the face of the clock here is probably the hardest part of the repair there's a post that mounts to the plastic inside the body of the clock that holds a screw that holds the whole thing together and there are two pieces to this there's the post up here and then there's the collar down here that the post fits into to help hold the two halves together now I hadn't realized it but the uh, collar at the bottom has actually broken into two pieces so I will have to try to super glue those back into place as well which could be a little bit of a challenge because this is kind of a cramped workspace here and I have to be careful of all those little wires or I'll end up soldering them back on to wherever they came from okay and there's the little clock I'll put back together again and I'll tell you what gluing the post in wasn't so bad but putting that stem back together that was a lot of fun I glued my fingers together several times working on that even with tools to help out and the clock chassis barely fits into this cabinet in fact it's so tight that I almost cracked the case open again where I'd glued it but I was careful and I backed off and I didn't end up breaking it again so now plug it in and there it is powers right up needs to be set but that's no big deal seems to work just fine now this isn't really an electronic repair because the electronics in this little clock were fine but it did need a little bit of a restoration to be able to go again and one might wonder you know why would you waste the time on a clock like this when clocks like this are a dime a dozen well first of all there's that cool blue display that really is nifty I know it's a cheap thrill but it really is kinda cool I don't know if I'll be able to show you this or not but here's how the photo cell part works I shine a light into the photo eye the display brightens if I take the light away the display will dim down which is really kinda cool I mean a lot of modern clocks don't have an adjustment for that much less a photo cell and also the display has a relatively cool symbol in it for when the alarm is turned on if you turn the alarm on in the little clock a symbol with a clock and some swooping stars comes on which is really kind of unique so that's why I felt that it was worthwhile to fix this little clock and restore it to good-looking condition once again well as good-looking as it is I mean obviously it's got some signs of use and stuff like that but I'm going to make sure that if the keykeeper ever gets his hands on it again he's going to take much better care of it